What's up, everybody? Kyle here at Let's Talk Wax. 2023 Bowman Draft is set to release Tuesday, December 12th, and in this video, I'll be breaking down my 10 favorite pictures on the first Chrome and Autograph checklist. I've already uploaded my top 25 hitters video, so if you missed it, I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. If you don't want to miss any of my future content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. My top 10 will be based on each pitcher's Let's Talk Wax rank that you can see on this slide. And it's worth mentioning that there is no significance to the order of players who share a Let's Talk Wax rank. Now, without further ado, let's dig into the best arms on this 2023 draft checklist. Leading off our 2.5 rankings is Xander Meath, and he was the Pirate second round pick in the 2023 draft out of Belleville High School in Illinois. He's six foot six inches with a low to mid 90s fastball that comes out of a funky three quarter arm slot. He tends to work on a horizontal plane creating a significant amount of arm side run and sink but it also impacts his command as his fastball does get away from him quite a bit. He has a slider that plays up a bit more than others because of his arm side run from the fastball. He also has a good feel for his changeup at the moment that he goes to quite a bit. I watched an outing in a perfect game event and I like his stuff. He just needs to dial it in a bit more. I'm going with an aggressive rank 2.5 here because I really like the ceiling of his fastball. He's yet to make his pro debut and his rank could change if his command gets away from him in 2024. Jackson Wiggins was drafted in the second round out of the University of Arkansas. He's a big dude standing at 6 foot 6 inches as well with a plus fastball that sits in the mid 90s. I've seen him run it up to 97 on some 5 balls in different videos. He also throws a change up and slider which are effective at this point. He showed some command issues last year in the SEC finishing up the season with a 5.9 walk per nine. He hasn't thrown any innings yet in the minor leagues, so we'll have to wait until the 2024 season to see how his stuff plays out professionally. Hunter Owen was drafted in the fourth round of the 2023 draft out of Vanderbilt University. I'm not sure how he lasted into the fourth round being a six foot six left-handed pitcher that sits in the mid nineties with his fastball. He has a smooth and effortless delivery with a breaking ball, slider, and changeup. In 12 starts for the Commodores in 2023, he held a 3.52 ERA, striking out 10.7 batters per nine. He's yet to make his professional debut, but I'm sure the Royals will let him remain a starter as he continues to develop his off-speed pitches. Worst case scenario, he takes his fastball slider combo to the bullpen in the upper minors. Bryce Eldridge is a two-way guy, and his offensive breakdown is on the other video. He's got a mid-90s fastball as well and is six foot seven, so his success on the mound will definitely revolve around how he develops his off-speed offerings. He didn't pitch at all following the draft, but he should be logging some innings in the 2024 season. Rounding out our 2.5 rankings is is Joe Whitman, who was drafted in the second round out of Kent State University. He's one of the top left-handed starters in the NCAA in 2023. His fastball sits in the low 90s, but he can reach 95 at times. He's 6'5 and has a pretty effortless delivery and good downhill plane. He held a 2.56 ERA and 15 starts with Kent State. He only threw 9.2 innings professionally in 2023, so the sample size is small. But he did perform well in low A, where he struck out 40.9% of the hitters he faced over 5.2 innings. Now, if you guys enjoy my content and you want to help support the channel, be sure to check out my Patreon page. I'll put a link to it in the video description. I've got lots of exclusive content over there, including my complete 2023 Bowman Draft autograph checklist breakdown with over 130 prospects and a team break guide as well. I've also uploaded autograph checklist breakdowns for all Bowman releases since 2019 and team break guides for all Bowman releases since 2020. I have a top 100 Bowman Chrome autos list and a top 100 Bowman Chrome autos under $50 list. You also get complete access to my juggernaut ranking system that ranks every prospect from 2023 based on objective stats and early access to all of my YouTube video info plus more. So if you guys want to help support the channel and unlock some exclusive content, be sure to check out my Patreon page. I'll put a link to it in the video description. Our only number two rank is Charlie Soto, who was drafted in the fourth round, 34th overall by the Minnesota Twins out of Reborn Christian Academy in Kissimmee, Florida. This kid gives me serious Jose Fernandez vibes and is probably one of the highest ceiling high school arms on this checklist. His fastball sits in the mid 90s and comes from an effortless delivery. He's got a strong six foot four inch body that projects well as he matures. He's only 18.2 years old. His changeup has great differential at 84 to 85, and his slider has exceptional vertical break. This is a kid to watch in 2024 as he's yet to log any innings following the draft. We've got a trio of 1.5 ranks that start with Noble Meyer, who was the first high school arm taken in the 2023 draft, and for a good reason. He's already 6'5 prior to his 19th birthday and throws a mid to upper 90s fastball from an effortless delivery. 
Aside from his double plus fastball, he has an excellent slider and changeup. I watched an entire outing on low A, and he utilizes the top and bottom half of the strike zone very well. He did have some command issues in his pro debut over an 11-inning sample size, but there are times when it looks like he tries to do too much with the fastball and gets a bit too east to west in his delivery. Meyer has the front end rotation stuff, and his fastball could see an increase in velo as he adds quality mass to his frame. Rhett Lauder was the second overall college pitcher selected in the 2023 draft out of Wake Forest University and immediately became the Reds' number one pitching prospect. He had a 15-0 record at Wake and ranked number four among all NCAA pitchers in Ks with 143. Louder throws a low to mid 90s fastball, but his best pitch is probably his changeup that wreaks havoc on lefties and generates a lot of swing and miss on righties as well. He does a very good job of moving the ball, and he was one of the hardest pitchers to barrel up in 2023. He didn't pitch this year in the minors, so we'll have to wait a year to get a good look at how his stuff pans out. Hurston Waldrop was the Braves' first round selection, 24th overall, out of the University of Florida. He's got one of the nastiest split changes I've ever seen, and it's definitely worth finding some video to watch. It's a swing and miss pitch at the AAA level, and his go-to at the moment with two strikes. He also throws a mid-90s fastball with an above-average breaking ball and slider. Waldrop worked all the way to AAA in his professional debut, but his command got a little fringy in AA and AAA. Aside from the walks, his stuff plays in the upper minors, and he could see some time with the big league club in 2024. That brings us to our only elite ranky, Paul Skeens, who was the number one overall pick in the 2023 draft out of Louisiana State University. Being a big LSU baseball fan, I only missed a handful of his starts in 2023, and I've never seen a college arm as dominant as his in years. He's six foot six and has no problem hitting triple digits with his fastball. His changeup isn't fair against left-handed hitters, and his slider sits in the upper 80s to low 90s. He's got electric stuff, a work ethic that is second to none, and already has the makeup of a seasoned MLB player. His double-A debut was rough, but I've seen him throw enough not to make any judgment based on a 2.2 inning outing. Skeens is a machine and has generational stuff on the mound. He led the NCAA in K's with 209, which was 50 more than Quinn Matthews had in second place. That's going to wrap up this video. Don't forget to check out my top 25 hitters from 2023 Bowman Draft. I'll have a link to it at the end of this video, and you can find a link to it in the video description as well. A quick shout out to all my Patreon level three sponsors. If you guys enjoy this content, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my content. Y'all have a great day and be sure to let me know in the comments who you're chasing out of 2023 Bowman Draft.